Mr. Lieberman, thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate your time. Uh, first question. Several polls now show that you have the third biggest party in the country. Will you try to be prime minister, maybe, as part of a rotation deal in the next government? First of all, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, to be very, very clear, our target in uh, current elections is to establish national unity government uh, without orthodox and without radicals. And from my point of view, it's clear that uh, two biggest parties, they will uh, have their candidates and we will support uh, both of them or one of them. It's de it uh, depends only on the issue if they will support national unity government. Your I don't see bigger and bigger. It's right? getting bigger I don't and bigger. see to be, you know, I'm uh, try to be realistic. It's not our time. I think that I have experience. I have enough uh, knowledge. Maybe only prime minister, only he has more experience and knowledge than me in our political system. But uh, today, I think that we still the third party, and we will wait uh, to the next elections to be first party. So, are you open to the possibility of again working closely with Benjamin Netanyahu? You know, of course, it's not a personal uh, dispute between us. I think that we really have a lot of issues that uh, we really divided, but it's not a personal issue. So the door is open? The door is open, and I told many times, and I clarified my position. I'm ready to sit with Benny Gantz, with Benjamin Netanyahu, it only depends on the uh, issue of national unity and readiness uh, to establish uh, this kind of government without orthodox parties. So precis precisely, Mr. Lieberman, Benny Gantz, uh, the head of the uh, Blue and White Party, said yesterday that he supports a large coalition government without the ultra-orthodox parties. So that's exactly what you want. So it, that means that you will recommend Mr. Gens to be the next prime I minister. I hope that uh, Benny Gantz will say the same things after elections, not before elections. What it's important, what we will hear day after elections, because Benny Gantz, you know, only some months ago he said, "I ready to sign with Orthodox parties. Everything you have." my open list, carte blanche, everything. And uh, <clears throat> in my uh, understanding, it, is, uh, it was very, very close coordination between Orthodox parties and Benny Gantz. Both of them, they are seeking uh, Israel Beiteno, more weak, uh, without a large number of seats in Knesset. You said before that you hope Benny Gantz will say the same thing the day after the election as he yeah. does the day before regarding not working with the uh, Haredi parties. Do you think then, are you, do you believe that Benny Gantz is not a man of his word? He is not telling the truth? No, I say only what I see every day on uh, TV screen. One day he said uh, carte blanche, the other day he said, we're ready, and uh, we know the day after elections we will discuss with the religious all the issues. And I see all his people from Ofer Shelach and Meir Cohen and uh, Michael Beaton and Bugia Elon. All of them only last week uh, clarified many times that they have good connections with the religious. And of course, the religious will be a partner. I think it's uh, really today they have a problem. Uh, first of all, with the polls, uh, I understand it uh, may be a main reason. And also with their credibility after 
so many things, different things. Uh, it's a very, very strange, uh, you know, change two weeks before elections. It's uh, something very strange. But already they adopted our agenda and they adopted our approach, and uh, it is only proof uh, that we really uh, have the uh, right position and right policy. A few days ago, Ayman Oda said for the first time he is willing to be part, maybe, of a coalition with Zionist parties. Most voters of the joint list want that. The polls show the Arab voters want that. What are your conditions, maybe, to working with an Arab party? Do you have conditions first, and then maybe you will think about it? Yeah, it's, uh, again, to be very, very clear, from my point of view, I'm Anuda, his place in Ramallah, in Parliament in Ramallah, not in Knesset Israel. It's uh, one who really, you know, uh, was uh, supported, uh, he supported Hezbollah against Arab League when they put uh, uh, Hezbollah on terrorist list. It's one who supported Arafat and, uh, of course, uh, he was, he, uh, was uh, against uh, again, uh, some agreement with merits about the same uh, votes because merits is uh, uh, Zionist party. I think it's clear that uh, I'm another one who works to destroy the state of Israel and uh, he completely unacceptable. He uh, was very supportive to Hamas, to Hezbollah, in every conflict with Israel. And uh, I don't think that uh, uh, he has any right to be a member of parliament, not to mention member of uh, our government. I think that we have uh, really a lot of loyal Arab citizens, but uh, I'm sorry that they don't have any uh, real something uh, uh, normal Arab parties that are ready to say and recognize the state of Israel and to be a real a part of our society. A question maybe about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Do you think we are close to the end of his political career because, because of the judicial issues? It doesn't matter for me. I don't think that uh, uh, two weeks uh, before elections, my opinion, it's important and I'm not it objective. I think that uh, it's a decision of all uh, our citizens uh, we will see during the elections, after elections, how many seats uh, he has in parliament. And uh, it's really open issue and only all our voters will decide what the result uh, at the end of uh, this campaign. Uh, one question about security. I want to get your reaction to the actions that we saw on the Israeli side, to the Hezbollah escalation this week. What are your thoughts on the IDF moving troops away from the border, the decision, uh, how they handled the Hezbollah threat? You were defense minister. You've thought about these issues. The IDF uh, performances, really everything was excellent. and. Uh, from military point of view, I think that they took all the right decisions. I think uh, the political leaders, they created too much noise. And uh, it's much better to keep uh, silence and, uh, uh, they know, the feeling, uh, the real reason for so many Vets and uh, interview. It's uh, uh, of course campaign elections and uh, this uh, 
uh, it's really a very bad feeling that somebody use uh, the military issues for campaign. And maybe about the Gaza Strip and Hamas, um, you uh, opposed to the actual politics uh, toward the Hamas. What do you propose exactly uh, regarding the, the Gaza Strip? I think also what we have in Gaza Strip, it's very wrong policy of our prime minister. Uh, it's clear capitulation and it's uh, against all our traditional views how to fight terror, what to do with terror. And capitulation, uh, it's uh, really maybe first time in all our history that we see that the uh, State of Israel, they ready to pay uh, protection money to the terrorists to keep uh, uh, tranquility on our southern border. I think it's a huge, huge mistake. It's damaged, uh, damaged our uh, deter uh, deterrence capabilities and uh, with uh, very bad consequences for the long run. Thank <laughs> you.